Good morning, Tim Stewart, Coach Papa here in the house with John Kennedy. Good morning, John. Hey, Tim. Great to see you. Uh, you too. Uh, a few years ago, I was in a, a networking group with John, and he talked about combat brain training as a retired infantry officer. I thought, this is interesting. I need to find out more about this. So, um, John, if, if you're willing, to, let's, just, uh, let's just jump right in. Now, as a, in combat brain training, your actual role is you're a neuroplastician. Yes. Uh, yeah. What the heck is a neuroplastician? <laughs> Strange name, actually. So that was actually that term was coined by um, uh, by Deutsch in his really excellent book, The Brain That Changes Itself. And I recommend that to anybody. Um, and he basically talks about people like myself, sometimes outside of the actual medical community who have developed programs based on the amazing capability God's given our brains to change from stimulation. And along the way, I've gotten to meet some amazing other neuroplasticians. There's a young man and uh, actually older man down in South Africa who developed a program to help people with Parkinson's uh, really overcome those, um, those debilitations without any medication. There's some others that have done amazing things with the brain. So because I'm not a neuroscientist, or a neurologist, but I've had phenomenal success in helping people change their brains to perform better. I just use the term neuroplastician, which basically means, you know, plasticity is the ability to change. Neuro is our brain. So neuroplastician uses neuroplasticity uh, to help our brains. So it is neuroplasticity, but why the name combat brain training? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, so many people are like, oh, my goodness, <laughs> combat. No, I don't train combat. The reason combat brain training was because I was initially contracted by the U.S. Marine Corps to develop this program. This was back in 2007. And, you know, the, probably the most intense, most dangerous environment is being actually being in combat. At the time, and probably still today, our biggest threat was from IEDs, improvised explosive devices. You could have a bomb in a corner and a trigger man a mile away. And, you know, uh, it's very, very dangerous for our troops. So I was at an event out of 29 Palms the Marines held every year. I was actually prompted by my brother, David, who had just returned from Iraq and said, hey, IEDs are killing us. Can you help? And my background was business process consulting to a number of very large companies here in Chicago. And in that event, uh, they, they, it was a, a big event with contractors from all over the world, big contractors like Honeywell and Boeing, small guys like me. They try to dump as much information about IEDs on us over a long weekend as possible. And there were some very great uh, solutions that came out of that. But what really struck me was the Marines who led us around, our guides were actually all Marines who had survived IED attacks. And the consistent story they told was, I started going down this one alley or into this one building, Something told me something was wrong, and I went a different way. The guys behind me kept going, and they got blown up. So, so why do we have two Marines, similar demographics, similar training? One has better what we would call intuition, not only sensing the danger, but actually acting on it. So that was the whole premise of this program initially, is to improve intuition. In other words, if we can make the brain so fast that it can anticipate a decision it has to make and execute on it, we could save lives, which is exactly what we did. So we did a, a, a big pilot study under the DOD for the Marines, extremely successful. And then I went on to train mostly military the first three years. So Navy SEALs, snipers, pilots, Marine Corps shooting team. And every unit I worked with significantly improved their performance. And then when I migrated to civilian sector, I realized that, you know, business people, athletes, kids, they're all in that same kind of environment where they have to make very fast, very accurate decisions, basically unconsciously and with better focus. So I'm not training anybody to do combat, although, you know, I work with a lot of martial artists and mixed martial artists, it helps them. But the main reason for it being called combat brain training is because anyone who um, sees themselves into that type of a situation where they have to make that bad, those fast decisions under stress, in a way they're in combat. So that's combat brain training. It's uh, it, it excited me from the military standpoint, obviously. But as I, I was a soccer coach at the time, I've just recently retired. And uh, 
you came on board and, and yeah. trained my girls. And, that was fun. You know, this has trained me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really powerful stuff. And you, you kind of alluded to it in your last answer, but this next question, I think, really is, uh, you call it the most powerful peak performance training program on earth. Seems a little much, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, yes. But, you know, one of the things I found over the, I've been doing this for 15 years now, continues to get better. Um, almost every performance program falls into two categories. One is physical, improving what we call muscle memory, right? So you go to coaches, you go to training camps, like your camp for your girls, right? You work on your drills over and over again. And we call that muscle memory. But what it's really doing is it's improving the connections from your outside body to your brain. Almost every other type of um, performance program is psychology based. So you've got mental toughness coaches and excellent stuff, right? And I kind of liken that to a model of a computer. So if you look at your computer, all the skills are kind of like the applications on your computer, right? So you, if you're a gamer, you want to upgrade your games, you get upgrade your gaming program. If you want to upgrade your, you know, your software, uh, you know, business software or your browser, you upgrade that. Very kind of siloed, but you can improve them. I look at the mindset and mental toughness type coaches as improving the operating system of the brain, how you view things, how you think about things, how you think about yourself, kind of thinking through how you want to be. So that's the mind. So we have the body, the mind, but the fastest way to improve everything on your computer is just get a faster processor. And that's what I do. I target the brain specifically. So when we target the brain specifically, not only do better decisions under stress be made with better focus, better sexual weight awareness and so forth. Psychology also improves, self-confidence improves significantly, and whatever skills that you are working on, that also improves, just like that faster process in your computer. So there is no other program on earth like mine, according to US Special Operations Command, and I can probably help people in sometimes as little as an hour notice the improvements in, you know, better, faster thinking, which is a huge uh, performance metric and focus. It's, uh, I've been using it for quite a while and I, I told you inadvertently I moved my office and I stopped doing it for about two years and it took me two days to get back to where I was two years ago. <laughs> yeah, the great thing about it is even though I, I never really talk about the neuroscience that much when I work with people because we're talking about the results, it's based on solid neuroscience. What, when I first developed this, um, there was research out of MIT that said with robust stimulation, the brain will start to change immediately, which is what I needed for the Marines. They didn't have time to sit around a classroom. I needed to work with them in the field, give them exercises they could take with them wherever they were. And robust stimulation from our perspective is when we stimulate uh, the parts of the brain critical to executive function, which is our decision-making process at the same time as the connections to the real world that we use to interface, eyes, ears, mouth, hands, feet. Incidentally, that's why uh, the, the um, digital type programs, you know, like Lumosity, which was fined by the FTC, Cogmed, you know, you get better at the games because you practice the games and those games are always directed at the testing they use. But neuroscience for years has said there's very minimal real world benefits because you're not connecting to the real world. And that's exactly what we do. We connect to the real world so that those that you make changes in the real world performance and those changes happen very, very quickly because of that robust stimulation. Now, how did you get, you didn't grow up, you didn't become a scientist. How did you decide to develop this and, and where did it come from? Well, you know, so my background before this was as a process improvement consultant and I had built myself a reputation for a lot of companies here in Chicago and other companies, usually up at the sea level, very high, uh, um, rescuing projects using a very specific uh, process improvement uh, methodology that I developed. So Aon, Motorola, AJ Gallagher did work for all those companies very, very successfully. And my goal always is to simplify things. So with a very simple concept universally applied as opposed to a lot of complex ideas and then trying to fit them in different things. So that was kind of the hallmark of my success. And then, as I mentioned, when my brother came back from Iraq, I had an opportunity to try to save lives instead of just helping companies make more money. So, so that was emphasis. And, and why this was so effective so fast 
um, is because I believe innovation isn't necessarily creation, but adaptation. When you can adapt something successful in one environment to another, you're miles ahead of people starting from scratch. Yeah. And so my whole brain training methodology is based on my process reengineering methodology for businesses. We applied it to the brain. We used um, neuroplasticity as a medium for the changes. And I use an agile approach to continually improve you know, cyclically the benefits we get. And that's what people will experience in my program is they'll start to be amazed at the things that are happening in their life um, because they, they use typically do it for one purpose, right? So athletes will, will do it for sports, other benefits. One of my favorite stories is a financial analyst I worked with uh, who was completely overwhelmed, got a promotion at work, and worked with him on a Friday. And so I expected to hear work was going better next week, which I did. What blew me away was Monday morning. He emailed me. He said, hey, John, I got to tell you what happened. I ran through your exercises Saturday morning. I got more done around the house by noon than normally would all weekend. And my wife now says when she talks to me, I'm focused on her. He said, you already made my home life great. I can't wait to get to work. Because the changes that we're making to the brain impact all areas of our life, just like the process work I did with businesses as opposed to just one specific, specific thing. And so that's what basically it's been. That was my background with business. And now I actually consult to businesses integrating both process improvement plus the brain training <coughs> for extraordinary results. Who can benefit from this training? Well, just about anybody. The beauty of this is when we first did that first program with the Marine Corps, the whole purpose was to reduce casualties, right? Improve war fighting and combat. We found, though, that first experiment, and again, you know, DOD authorized, we had psychologists all over the place, we had a randomly chosen control group. I asked to work with the worst platoon in the battalion, so 40 guys out of 1,000. These guys really suffered a lot from post-traumatic stress disorder. They'd lost 16 guys a cycle before, failing a lot of pre-deployment objectives they needed to exceed. So I embedded with them for three months. That's where I actually developed the exercises. Three months later, not only were they best performing platoon of the battalion, but also the instructor at their training course at 29 Palms said it was the best performance he'd ever seen. Now, along the way, it wasn't just the high performance of performing better. It was the guys with a lot of the other issues as well. Three guys had tried to commit suicide before we started. So the beauty of what I do now is I always work with people wherever they are. And, and I like to say I don't work with comfortable people. If people are perfectly happy with what they're doing, keep doing it. But if you're a really high performer and you're looking for that edge, I can help you. But at the same time, I love working with people on the other end of the spectrum because you know, traditional med medicine and medical approaches are all research based. And so they're trying to find one little thing that might make a difference. With my program, I've been able to help successfully uh, accelerate recovery from concussions, from post-traumatic stress disorder, from depression, from anxiety. I even have a, a, um, a client now who was diagnosed with severe amnesia. After three weeks, the doctor was amazed. He completely changed his prognosis from never being able to be independent to being able to be independent again. So it complements, doesn't compete with anything, but anybody really who is struggling in any area of their life, those are the people I like to work with. I, I, I don't want to say this too loud, but isn't that everybody? <laughs> it is. It is everybody. But, you know, I have to filter it, right? So anybody with a brain is a huge market, right? So yeah. That's why. Well, and, and the but, truth of it is anybody who has a desire is ready to make a choice. Yes, uh, exactly. Better. And, and the cool thing, too, Tim, is I actually work with a lot of families. So I've worked with families where, you know, dad, mom, and the kids, right? So, you know, I, one young family, a um, young boy with very severe um, ADHD, uh, he couldn't focus on anything. They want to give medication. The family didn't want to give medication. After the very first session, the dad told me that for the first time ever, he paid attention um, when he was playing uh, baseball. He listened to the coaches. And when he came home, he was bored. His dad said, go read a book. And he read a book for over an hour with his brother bugging him, which he never could have done before. At the same time, you know, the dad's doing better, making better decisions at work. The mom's sales, she's doing better. So when we do these as a family, everybody in the family benefits. And it's also a great bonding experience that they can do together. Um, here's your website. I've got it up now. If you're out there, you see this. If you scan that little barcode at the bottom, it'll bring you right into John's calendar. And uh, 
you know, be able to have a conversation about uh, what's going on in your world. How do you think uh, CBT combat brain training can uh, can work for you? Absolutely. The email and, and the barcode set up a meeting again, you know, only serious people need to apply. I mean, it, basically, when we, we, we work together, I take people through some increasingly more difficult brain exercises, but they're very engaging and fun. People typically laugh. And then there's always some homework, right? So they have to practice five to 10 minutes a day in between our sessions. Um, and I do workshops, I do keynotes, off sites for businesses and so forth. But the, the people need to think about it as, as more of a training program as opposed to a learning program. I'll explain some things, but I don't actually, um, you know, what's happening. But the main thing is just work in your brain, like go to the gym, right? You don't have to know how your muscles work. You just need to lift weights and you get stronger. Um, this is the basic workout that's uh, that's on the screen, and I've got mine right here. <laughs> Great. Um, Great. Yeah, very simple, right? It's very simple. It's, it's interesting. It's not, in the beginning, and, and just like a lot of the coaching that I do, it is so simple that people sometimes don't right. adhere to it. Right. But, you know, writing three things down you're grateful for, probably the easiest thing you're going to do all day one of the most positive things you do all day, but I cannot tell you the number of clients who miss four out of seven days of doing their journaling. <laughs> right, right. So, well, you know, this, Jim, another part of that. So, my 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 workshops are working now. I actually call "Blow Your Mind." So, so the key to this so effective training your brain is that robust stimulation and the agile approach to continue to to, to train it based on the defined thinking process we want to improve. Let's expand it now, and I call it blow your mind, an agile approach to hacking your brain. So actually, we've applied the same approach to help people change habits, not in six weeks or two months, but we can help people change habits and create new habits in as little as an hour, less than an hour. And we apply that same thing to mindset as well. So so mind, we call it habitude, cognitude, and attitude. And so there's a way to use that same approach to improve all areas of people's lives, including habits like doing their gratitude journal every day as well. Well, in, instead of saying dude, we can say tood, right? Yeah, right. Are, are you part of the tood? So, well, that's uh, that's great stuff, John, and you're, you're such a good guy. Uh, you know, on the other end of who can benefit, I know you do something uh, with people at your church. You go to senior homes and that. Yeah. Talk yeah. about how this has a, could affect a senior. Yeah, they love it, actually. So our church donate, we, they have me go in. They work once a quarter um, at several of the Swedish covenants. One of them, I mean, um, Covenant Village is one of them, different different senior centers. And I, I still, you know, I'll run into one of the, the older people at church and uh, once in a while, and they'll say, oh, John, I'm still doing your exercises, and they love it. We've done this, actually, uh, set up a program in California where I trained some therapists how to do this. It was the most popular program they had because – you know, um, it doesn't matter where the baseline of your brain is. So so seniors are starting to lose their memory, starting to lose their focus a little bit. This helps significantly. In fact, one of the neuroscientists, I have a lot of neuroscientists, I really appreciate that, have actually provided the background research why this works. So, so the difference of, of results, so this is results-based, right? Marines give me a contract. If it doesn't work, they fire me, right? As right. opposed to research-based, which can take years and years and years to find something. So, um, so one of the neuroscientists from uh, the Harvard Martino Center told me that one of the critical pieces to maintaining our memory in, as we get older is proper blood flow. Because what happens is as we get older, the capillaries supplying our neurons start to dry out and then those neurons are gone. We, we can't, if it's memory, we forget that. One of the most powerful things of this program, especially in addition to improving focus very, very quickly, is it significantly increases blood flow throughout the brain. I mean, a lot of people can actually feel it in their heads. And so when we increase that blood flow, he says we can actually create neurogenesis and actually create new neurons, new brain cells, and reverse um, the decline in memory. And I have, I have a, a gentleman I'm working with now, older gentleman was, who's suffering from some dementia, and Everybody around him, including himself, is noticing improvements. Outstanding. All right, sir. Uh, that's uh, That's been it for me. Any last moment uh, thought you'd like to throw out? Uh, thanks, Tim. Just, you know, I want people to um, to know that there's hope if they're struggling. You know, I work with kids with learning disabilities, and 
And I know parents are frustrated, the kids are frustrated, even people coming back from concussions. You know, um, there is hope, right? So we can definitely help change their lives for the positive uh, with this kind of program. All right. Well, this is Tim Stewart. I am Coach Papa. Thanks, Jim. This message. God bless. Travel safe. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Best day yet. You bet, John. Now get off the bench and get back. In yeah. The